I'd like to welcome my viewers to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a product review on this rechargeable soldering iron. The soldering iron you see here is made by Isotip. The folks over at Isotip were very kind to send me a free unit, and the only stipulation was that I do a product review and give my honest opinion of the soldering iron. This company does sell electronic as well as gas soldering irons. Take a look right here. This one here, model 7700, is the one I'm going to be showing you in a minute. That one charges fully in three and a half to four hours and allows you to solder up to 125 joints per charge during continuous use. So if you put it back in the holder as you're using it, of course you're going to get more than 125 charges because you're allowing the soldering iron to recharge as you're using it. The next one here is the model 7800. The only difference is this one charges faster. It charges in one hour and it also includes this little indicator to let you know that the electronic soldering iron is charging. And the last one at the bottom is the Power Pro and that one also charges the same as the one that I have, three and a half to four hours. Has a high capacity battery that provides up to 30 minutes of continuous use and you can solder 200 plus solder joints per charge while using continuously. Over here you can see the multitude of tips that are available. You have long life tips, they're nickel plated, you have the standard tips, it's basically ceramic with resistive wire wrapped around that ceramic piece and then the end piece slides over which heats up to melt the solder. There's different styles. The company sells butane powered soldering irons, little mini torches, silver bearing soldering paste, as well as some cordless rechargeable filer and sander kits. I'm going to be placing a 10% off coupon code in the video description area as well as a link to this company if you would like to make a purchase. Alright, let's take a look at the soldering iron. Alright, world's number one rechargeable soldering iron kit. According to this, cordless operation up to 125 solder joints per charge, tip temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit in less than 10 seconds. It's equivalent to a 25 watt soldering iron, balanced weight and design that we will check out in a minute. Now this one has a illuminating bayonet bulb. The only thing that you're going to notice with my soldering iron, which is going to differ from the one you see here, as usual I like to modify things. I replace the incandescent lamp with an LED, an ultra bright white LED. And I also added a charge indicator on this model to let me know that good contact is being made with the rechargeable soldering iron and the base. Those of us who have had cordless vacuum cleaners that hang on the wall, you all know the problem when you go to mount the vacuum on the wall, it, unless you wiggle it sometimes, the charging light will not come on. So that's why it is critical that this needs to have the charging indicator because you may place this in the holder and think that it's charging but in reality it's not because it's not properly positioned. That's why I added it. Now with the 10% off discount code, which is in the video description area, you could purchase the next model up, which charges quicker, and it also has the charge indicator light built in. The battery is nickel cadmium, industrial maintenance, jewelry and fine fixes, electrical handiwork, soldering and brazing, automotive repairs, arts and crafts, do-it-yourself projects. The good thing about these soldering irons, you don't have to be dragging a wire. Certain times you might want to work under your dashboard or your car to repair a circuit board and you don't want to be running cords and having cords get in the way, pulling on the soldering iron. So these are extremely useful. Let's open it up. What do we have here? Question, when was the world's first cordless rechargeable soldering iron introduced? See the bottom. Let's see. Here it is. Answer is 1971, 
and it captured 90% of the market in two weeks. Nicely done wall. It's the same exact company that makes my hair trimmer. Let's slide everything out. Here we have the charging base. See inside the two contacts are spring loaded to ensure that when the rechargeable soldering iron is placed back into the base, that good contact is made with the bottom of the soldering iron, which you can see right there. There is a groove. This can only go in one way, that's that way. Doesn't make a difference if it moves around like that. The charge still takes place. Over here on mine, I'm going to show you images of the inside of the unit on both the charging base as well as the soldering iron. I added a red power indicator right here where it says ISO tip. And right here, what I did is I took the bayonet base bulb. Now the bayonet base bulb is an incandescent lamp. And the problem with incandescent lamps, which are resistive, is that they waste a lot of electricity. So what ends up happening, the current that's going into lighting this bulb actually takes away from the number of charges that you can get out of this battery pack when it's fully charged. So I felt the best thing to do was to convert this to using an ultra bright LED. So I took the old bayonet based bulb, which is this one right here. It's a pen light bulb. This draws around a quarter of an amp, around 2.8 volts. What I wanted to do was be able to save that much current to go towards soldering more joints. The LED only draws around 23 milliamps versus the 230 to 250 milliamps that this little incandescent lamp used. Now I'm going to be able to solder more because I'm using less current to power my light. All I did was take the bayonet base bulb like you see here, broke open the top, desoldered the bottom. There's a spot on the side here right there where I could solder to. What I did is I took a 10 millimeter LED and I just soldered it into the base of where the original incandescent lamp was. The circuit which I used to power it, I'll be discussing in a minute. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you an image of the inside of this charging base with this cover removed. And you can see that right here. As you can see, it's nothing more than just a small low wattage transformer, around 5 watts to step the voltage down and inside that transformer which you cannot see are the rectifier diodes to convert to DC. Each one of the shiny pieces of metal connect to the soldering iron to allow it to charge. In order to turn it on you push it but in order to actually unlock it you gotta rotate that little dial until it's at the 12 o'clock position where it says use. Once it's pushed then you can see the LED come on nice and bright. All right, you put it in the dark so it's easy to see. It's very nice and bright, the LED. The next thing I'm going to show you is when I place this in the charger, you're going to see that this red LED comes on, indicating that I do have a good connection in the charging base. As you can see, it's plugged in, and now the LED is on, indicating the electronic soldering iron is charging. Comes out, off. In. The soldering iron is very well balanced. It's very comfortable. It's not too heavy. Very easy to use. You just push that button down in the 12 o'clock position and you'll be able to solder. Now the tips slide in right here. I'm going to show you those tips right now. Choose the tip you want to use. One is slanted. And the other one is pointed but rounded off. I'm going to be installing this one. Once you know it's in the lock position, install it into the openings right here in the brass. One leg in each. Push it in. All right. Once it's like that, then you're going to tilt it back. Grab it here. Tilt it back and push down. Now it's locked. And the tip is now ready to go. 
Now the voltage that was used on the incandescent lamp was around 2.5 volts to 2.7. Clearly that's not enough voltage to drive an ultra bright LED. So what I did is I put together a very small Jewel Thief circuit which allows a 3.1 to 3.2 volt bulb to be able to be used on a 1.5 volt battery. In this case I'm using 2.5 volts so this bulb is going to be driven a little brighter using that circuit. The circuit is extremely simple to put together and it only requires a ferrite bead about that long by about that much in diameter. I'm going to place a link in the video description area to show you the circuit that you can use to convert yours from incandescent to LED. The other change that I made was by adding this power indicator and that was extremely easy as well what I did is this positive connection here on the right the wire leads straight over to the positive on the battery where it's screwed down I disconnected the wire from this terminal and I installed a 1N5818 shot key diode and it has around a 0 0.15, 0 0.16 volt forward voltage drop so it's very very low it's not going to affect things too much between this pin and the diode is where I'm taking a wire and running it to the anode of the LED. The cathode of the LED connects to a 100 ohm resistor and it ties into this pin here. So the only way this LED here is going to light up is if voltage is being detected at the end of the soldering iron. The battery inside here is not going to cause this to come on. It has to be in the cradle. All right, and you'll see it come on. There you go. See the red? And when you lift it out, off, on, off. So it does work extremely well. I have a couple of pictures showing what the inside looks like. Right up here, you'll see a little ferrite bead with the wire wrapped through it. And you're also going to see a couple of enamel wires running from the bottom up. And that's going to this LED. Now when you look at the image I'm about to show you, you're going to see a lot of things, but you're not going to see how I connected the Jewel Thief circuit to the bulb because it's kind of hidden, but when you push this button down, there's a brass strip over here that pushes against the positive of the battery. That allows the current to flow into the tip and into the side of the bayonet base bulb. There's a little extension of this brass spring, which pushes against the bulb at all times, allowing it to make contact to light up. What I did is I cut that section away off this strip, and you'll see an area where I soldered. That's where I tie the Jewel Thief circuit in to the bulb. On the side of the bayonet base inside of here is where I soldered a little area to connect the other side of the Jewel Thief circuit to supply power to the bulb. Looking at the way it was constructed, I would say the quality is very good. I don't see anything that I would say is cheap about this. So this is a very nice electronic soldering iron, but we are going to have to put it to the test to see how well it works. The first little test I want to do is see how long it takes once this button is pressed until this tip gets hot enough to melt solder. So let's give it a try. Rotated this into the used position. And I'm going to push it, and we're going to see how many seconds. And there you go, right there, it's melting right there. And it's already tinned, tinned beautifully. As you can see, it heated up fairly quickly, and that was from cold. So once you use it the first time, it'll be warm, it'll heat up much quicker the second time. You could push it down and let it heat up and do each connection, or you could hold it down 
and do a bunch at one time. What I'm going to do now is give you a quick demonstration. I have a circuit that I need to solder together on a prototype PC board and I have a dimmer control circuit for 3 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts or 12 volts that was in a previous video. You can check it out in the link right here. We're going to be soldering the components to that board and see how well this works. All right, we're going to try these larger ones on this TO220 MOSFET and a bunch of the smaller ones. Before using the soldering iron, make sure the tip is well tinned like you see here. Push the button, allow it to fully heat up. The longer the tip is held down, the hotter the tip will get. So if you want to have the tip a little cooler, just back off every so often on the button, release it, and then you could do momentary pushes to the button to maintain a particular temperature. Over time, you will get used to how the soldering iron works. Okay. Heat up. See when it starts to melt. Let it heat up a little bit more. Try the smaller one right here. Heat it up. Worked good. Let's try the larger one right here. As you can see, I soldered a lot of the connections. I trimmed off all the leads, and now I'm going to finish off on this side of the board over here. There's three connections that need to go together. Put it on. And you can see it really works well. Everything flows together very nicely. This is the first time I use the soldering iron for any of my projects. And after using it, I can say I would definitely purchase one of these soldering irons. They're extremely handy to have just for the fact that they are cordless and they heat up fairly quickly. Keep in mind, if you need a smaller tip, they are available. Sometimes you might work on an integrated circuit where the leads are very close together and this one here might be a little too fat to get everything nice and neat. So they are available and everything is located at that website. The rest of this board I'll finish off camera. I have to install a few jumper wires. I just wanted to demonstrate how well the soldering iron works. I would definitely recommend this to somebody else. If you're interested, like I said earlier, please refer to the link in the video description area and there's also a 10% off coupon code which you can use if you decide to purchase one. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.